Well, greetings all on this glorious Tuesday morning and the new week of Brian's Bible Break. I'm delighted that you've joined me this morning for this short reflection on God's Word and pray that you'll find encouragement and hope from it. This morning we're looking at Psalm 34 and reading verses 8 to 10 from the New Living Translation. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Oh Lord God, we thank you and we praise you, Lord, and we are so grateful that you welcome us into your presence in this uh, moment to just pause and to reflect on your word and to listen to your still small voice speaking to us. Father, we're grateful for your hand of favor upon us. Jesus, we're thankful that you gave your life for ours so that we could have communion with you. Holy Spirit, we're thankful that you guide us and direct us each and every day, that you pour out your wisdom upon us to help us navigate whatever it is we face this day. And so, God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we thank you that you welcome us with open arms and that we can find our rest in you. And so, God, quiet within us any voice but your own in the name of Jesus Christ, that we may hear you speaking to us. A word for today, a word of encouragement and hope. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So reading from Psalm 34, verses 8 to 10. Taste and see that the Lord is good. O oh, the joys of those who take refuge in him. Fear the Lord, you his godly people. For those who fear him will have all they need. Even strong young lions sometimes go hungry. But those who trust in the Lord will lack no good thing. This psalm, uh, these verses from the psalm, um, and especially verse 8, are often attributed to our celebration of the Lord's Supper. Taste and see that the Lord is good. It is that beautiful expression that all that we receive from the Lord, his goodness, his grace, his provision, is indeed good that we lack no good thing. And so the psalmist says, and this is a psalm of David, so David is writing this. He says, Taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, the joys of those who take refuge in him. What a profound truth in that one verse. That God is indeed good. He is our good, good Father as the song says. And there's great joy for those who take refuge in him, for those who find comfort in him, for those who find peace in him. And for those who are in Christ, we are one with him and with the Father and with Holy Spirit. We find our refuge and our joy, and our hope, and our peace, and our comfort in Him, and in Him alone. And then David writes, Fear the Lord, you His godly people. For those who fear Him will have all they need. The fear of the Lord is, is something that is not particularly popular these days. Um, the fear of the Lord that is, is referenced often in Scripture is a sense of reverence, acknowledgement that God is God and we are not, that He is worthy of our praise and we are in need of His presence, His hand of favor, His wisdom. So David says, Fear the Lord, you His godly people. In other words, don't take God for granted, but have a, a, a reverent posture towards God, heart that seeks after him, 
as it was said of David. If we come to his come into his presence with fear and trembling, knowing that we are in the presence of the Almighty. And that because he is omnipresent, omniscient, he is able to do what we ask of him because of his great power and his great wisdom and his great might. And so there's great comfort in that. There's great comfort in that in that fear, that reverence of God, that, that with God all things are possible. Nothing is too hard for God. Fear the Lord, you his godly people. For those who fear him will have all they need. In other words, for those who, who approach the Lord God with a with a posture of humility, a posture of reverence, will receive abundantly from the Lord. And we all know people, I'm sure, that, that don't think that God is someone to be feared. They don't have that, that sense of, of fear, that sense of awe and wonder, that sense of, of fear and trembling before the Lord. They don't think there are any consequences for their actions. They don't think that, that God actually exists or God actually does anything in the lives of his people. And sadly, they're wrong. Because we know and worship the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who is very much present and very much active in our lives and in the world today. And just because he doesn't give us what we ask for, when we ask for it, doesn't mean that he doesn't exist. It's interesting. When I was a child, I asked for all kinds of things. I rarely got them. And for a variety of reasons, sometimes because what I was asking for wasn't good for me or wasn't healthy or wasn't safe. But maybe it just it didn't make sense for me, for my age. Or maybe my parents couldn't afford it. There are all kinds of reasons why we didn't why I didn't receive from my parents, what I asked for. But just because I didn't receive them didn't mean that, that they didn't love me. In fact, it was the opposite. They loved me so much that they knew that even though I was asking for something that I wanted, they knew what was best for me. And so I didn't always get it. And somehow we've seem to have lost that sensibility today. And with it, we've lost that sense that, that God gives us what is good for us. And we may want something that is not good for us. We may ask God for it, but because it's not good for us, he doesn't give it to us. And that's, that's a, a real truth. That actually, Jesus teaches that, right? What father, when their child asks for a piece of bread, gives him a scorpion, as an example, right? God knows what we need, and he knows what is good for us and what is not good for us. And so that fear of the Lord, fear the Lord, you his godly people, for those who fear him will have all they need, not all they want, not all they desire, all they need. And then 
David paints an example for us, just in case we're not picking up what he's laying down here. He says, even strong young lions sometimes go hungry. But those who trust in the Lord will lack no good thing. Now, notice that. He says, will lack no good thing, not will lack nothing. You see, we, in our world today, we see all kinds of people who twist Scripture around. And they will say, well, if you trust in the Lord, you'll lack nothing. And that's not what the Word says. It doesn't say you'll lack nothing. It says you will lack no good thing. In other words, building on what, what David has just said, that the Lord is, taste and see that the Lord is good. In other words, taste and see that all that the Lord gives you, all that the Lord provides for you is good. That we will have all we need. That we will lack no good thing. In other words, we will lack nothing that is good from the Lord. He will pro provide everything we need. And we will lack no good thing. Friends, part of our journey with the Lord is is a deeper understanding of his will. And notice that I stopped there when I said his will. Because another challenge that we have it today is that is that we tend to personalize everything. His will for me, his will for us. No, his will. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Not thy will be done for me. Right? First and foremost is we pray that the will of God will be done. And that we will be included in that outpouring of his will. And David assures us of that. He says, those who fear him will have all they need. The will of God is not to see us suffer. The will of God is not to see us uh, languish in a place of want and need. No. We have a good, good Father who loves us and provides abundantly for us according to our need. Taste and see that the Lord is good. I hope as you go through your day today, friends, you will remember that verse. Taste and see that the Lord is good. And trust in him. Turn over to him whatever it is you're facing this day. And allow him to take it and deal with it according to his will. Knowing that he will provide you everything that you need. That you will lack no good thing. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. And we praise you for it. We acknowledge, O oh God, that you are worthy of our praise. And Lord, we are in need of your hand of favor upon us. And so, God, as we go about navigating this day, would you go before us and behind us, Lord? Would you place your hedge of protection around us? Would you make your face shine before us? That as we seek you with our whole heart, we will find you. Jesus, would you help us to shoulder the load that we have this day. That you may receive all the glory and the praise. And that your name may be lifted high.
And Holy Spirit, would you direct our steps? That as we humbly walk with you, we will give you glory and praise through the words we speak and the things we do. Father, we need you, and we thank you. Jesus, we need you, and we thank you. Holy Spirit, we need you, and we thank you. And we praise you with our whole heart for your glory. In your precious name we pray, amen. Well, friends, thanks for joining me this morning for this short reflection on God's Word. I hope that it has been an encouragement to you. And we look forward to seeing you tomorrow as we unpack another verse from God's Word. Have a blessed day, friends. Go in peace. The Lord bless you and keep you this day and always. Amen. See you tomorrow.